Welcome one and all. Ladies and gentlemen, children of all ages. Monsieur and Madame. Mr. and Mrs. America and all the ships at sea, welcome to The Late Show. I'm your host, Stephen Colbert, and we are right now. You can feel the excitement. That excitement only comes from one thing. We are live. Look at that. Live after. Right there. That proves it. We're live following the South Carolina Democratic debate. It aired right here on CBS with Bernie Sanders, Michael Bloomberg, and Joe Biden. So, a little young for CBS, but... <laughs> I'll tell you all about it in tonight's special live debate edition of... I have a plan for that. A progressive agenda. Donald Trump's worst nightmare. We are at each other's throats. We made a lot of money. I'm gonna beat this man like a drum. Ah! You know who number one is? Trump. Fury Road to the White House 2020. Winter Story! <laughs> now... Tonight on that dusty highway to hell, the Democrats met in my hometown of Charleston, South Carolina, and these folks said a lot of words, and I did not hear many of them. <laughs> the candidates were speaking all over each other the entire time. I think of the quote of the night absolutely has to be, Argo Bargo, more boys, peace and cares. He said my name, he said my name. <laughs> now, one candidate, <laughs> he says right there, that she says that right there. Legally, that's the quote of the night. One candidate uh, wasn't exactly in top form coming in to the debate. Here's Joe Biden last night. My name's Joe Biden. I'm a Democratic candidate for the United States Senate. Oh. Uh-oh. That's a tiny little gaffe from presidential candidate Joe Biden. But, hey, we all misspeak sometimes. I'm sure he'll nail the rest of this sentence. Look me over. If you like what you see, help out. If not, vote for the other Biden. I'm Joe Biden. I'm Joe Biden. I'm running for Biden against the other Biden. Look me over. If you, if you like what you see, wrap me in a blanket. Take me to a safe place filled with people I know. The address is right here on this bracelet. Come on, let's go, man. Come on. Listen, folks. Listen. <laughs> Simplest impression of all time. Now, sorry about that. The debate tonight kicked off with a couple of haymakers between Bernie and Bloomy. The economy is doing really great for people like Mr. Bloomberg and other billionaires. Vladimir Putin thinks that Donald Trump is, should be president of the United States, and that's why Russia is helping you get oh, elected. Wow. That is really punching below the belt, but then again, Bloomberg can't reach much higher. <laughs> but mm. Bernie had a simple message for one Mr. Vladimir Putin. Hey, Mr. Putin, if I'm president of the United States, trust me, you're not going to interfere in any more American elections. Because if I'm president, we won't be voting on machines he can hack. I'll make sure everybody gets a pebble, and we all put that pebble in the old coffee can of their candidate. Vote Bernie Maxwell House 2020. It's an answer solution. It'll work. It's a revolution chock full of nuts. This time, this time it wasn't just Bloomberg attacking Sanders. All the candidates had their torches out to set fire to the wicker Bernie. For instance, Mayor Pete proposed a thought experiment. Imagine spending the better part of 2020 with Bernie Sanders versus Donald Trump. Personally, I think it'd be great because Bernie and Trump are the only two impressions I can do. <laughs> it's really hard, I gotta say. I don't know. It's really hard to do a Mayor Pete. Hello, sir or madam. Can you direct myself and Chaston to the nearest wine cave? <laughs> I don't... Nothing. He doesn't have juice. Uh. <laughs> Biden uh, touted his success among the black voters. I've worked like the devil to earn the vote of the African-American community. Unlike Trump, who has worked with the devil to get the support of the white community. <laughs> now, oh, Biden my. was also... <laughs> sir, why not? <laughs> the By devil! By any means necessary. Hey. Big fans of the devil here tonight. Biden <laughs> was also confident about his prospects in this week's primary. I will win South Carolina. I will win South Carolina. I will be their next senator as sure as my name is Skeeter Hot Dog Picklesworth. Come on, man. <laughs> now, when the subject... When the subject of stop and frisk uh, in New York came up, Mayor Bloomberg tried to explain how much he's learned since then. 
So I've met with black leaders to try to get an understanding of how I can better position myself. Mr. Mayor, I have a feeling that a lot of black leaders want your position to be spread eagle up against a wall. <laughs> but he, uh, he bloomed on. I have over 100 black uh, elected officials that have endorsed me. Uh, a lot of them are in the audience tonight. A lot of them are in the audience tonight. Officers stop them, check their pockets. There's an endorsement in there someplace. I promise you. Mm. Then, all of Bloomberg's voters are here tonight, I think. <laughs> Then Bloomberg got asked if it was wrong for him to have made sexist jokes in the past. Probably wrong to make the jokes. I don't remember what they were. Oh, wait, I remember. Did you hear the one about the guy who asked the genie for a 12-inch pianist? <laughs> I see now that joke is incredibly insensitive to short people. <laughs> then, after a question about the cost of Bernie's Medicare for All program, things got a little shouty. I think we were right. talking about math, and it no, doesn't take no, two let's, hours let's to do the math. Because let's talk about let's what talk it adds about up to. Well, we math. Don't. Let's talk about let's math. Talk about math. Okay. Let's talk about math, baby. Let's talk about health for free. Let's tax the one percent and bring an end to poverty. Let's talk about math. Yes. In Papa. And me. Let's talk about Senator Klobuchar brought here Midwesterness to the gun debate. I look at these proposals and say, do they hurt my Uncle Dick in the deer stand? <laughs> Senator, I'm pretty sure Michael Bloomberg had to sign an NDA for talking about his Uncle Dick in the deer stand. <laughs> then it was just a joke. Then Bloomberg tried a zinger. Let me also say, because it just uh, since, since I have the floor for a second, that I really am surprised that all of these, uh, my fellow uh, uh, contestants up here, I guess would be the right word for it, <laughs> given nobody pays attention to the clock, uh, I'm surprised they show up because I would have thought after I did such a good job in beating them last week that they'd be a little bit afraid to do that. Can I... Oh, okay. Uh, now I understand why he asked people to sign an NDA after he tells a joke. No one wants to remember that, no. Mayor Bloomberg kept workshopping his comedy. I think what's right for New York City isn't necessarily right for all the other cities. Otherwise, you'd have a naked cowboy in every city. Now, for those of you out there who do not live in New York City, there's this crazy man who wanders around the city and will not leave people alone. And that man's name is Mike Bloomberg. <laughs> and... Let's talk about math, baby. Let's talk about you and me. Hey, get now, thank you. Get thank down. you. Thank you, John. <laughs> Mike Bloomberg wanted to make sure that when it came to marijuana, the others weren't bogarting the pandering. Look, the first thing you do is we should not make this a criminal thing if you have a small amount. For dealers, yes. But for the average person, no. I agree. It would be terrible to have your entire life ruined because you were caught with a small amount of pot when you were stopped and, I don't know, maybe frisked. <laughs> The coronavirus is, of course, a global issue. It affects all of us. And Amy Klobuchar spoke about what she would do to help find the cure. I know the vaccine is out there in the head of some kid right now in school. We need to find that kid, capture him, and <laughs> dig into his precious brain meat for that sweet, sweet cure. <laughs> I'm Amy Klobuchar, and join me in stealing the dreams of sleeping children. Bernie wasn't always a hit with the crowd tonight, especially when he defended his limited praise of the Cuban Revolution. Cuba made progress on education. Yes, I think. Really? <clears throat> really? 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 You want to come at me, bro? Bring it. I had, <laughs> I had a decaf at 5.30 this morning, and I am amped. <laughs> Let me introduce you to my friends. Ben and Jerry were both from Vermont. Uh oh, uh oh. Okay. <laughs> this is the American. I will turn you into a chunky about. monkey. I will turn you into fish food. Uh -huh. When the topic turned to North Korea, Amy Klobuchar had a very Midwestern analysis of President Trump's diplomatic strategy. He uh, literally thinks he can go over and bring a hot dish to the dictator next door, and he thinks everything's going to be fine. I lived in the Midwest. Do you know what's in hot dish? <laughs> the vegetable 
is tater tot. <laughs> Technically, bringing a hot dish to a foreign leader counts as an assassination attempt. <laughs> then, to close things out, moderator Gail King asked the candidates what the biggest misconception is about them. Here's Klobuchar's answer. The biggest misconception is that I'm boring, because I'm not. I'm sorry, how, I'm sorry, how long was I out? I just, uh, who was talking? Oh, it was Amy Klobuchar. <laughs> then, then, Joe Biden gave this interesting answer. What's the biggest misconception about you, sir? I have more hair than I think I do. <laughs> okay. So the most common misconception about you is a misconception that only you have about yourself? <laughs> Look, everybody knows the truth, but they're mistaken because I'm wrong. <laughs> Bernie, Bernie, address the biggest misconception about him. Misconception, and you're hearing it here tonight, is that the ideas I'm talking about are radical. They're not. In one form or another, they exist in countries all over the world. In countries like Venezuela. Cuba, Mordor, Dr. Doom's <laughs> Latveria, they all make it work. Mm, mm. So there it is. Uh, seven candidates, five moderators, two hours, and one powerful message for America. And I can't allow, I can't allow this America to stand because it's just not true. Hey, Another Bernie, let me, let me you respond to this. Can I say something? Look, first of all, Bernie, first let me go. Let me go. It's going to be tough to fit on a bumper sticker. <laughs> we got a great show for you.